Hello everyone, I'm Dahan Wang from the University of Notre Dame. Today I would like to present our paper TCN, Table Convolutional Network for Web Table Interpretation. This work was mostly conducted while the first author was interning at Amazon. Let's first take a quick look at the roadmap of today's presentation. I will first introduce the motivation of this work, then formally define the research problem and list out the challenges we face. Next, I will briefly introduce the existing methods and their limitations to draw the intuition of our proposed approach. After that, I will share the experimental results with you to demonstrate the effectiveness of the proposed method and highlight a few interesting observations. So, starting with the motivation, today we often represent rich and complex fast information in the form of knowledge graph. It has a broad range of real applications, such as retrieving information to generate answers for questions that a virtual assistant received. Or we can make personalized recommendations to customers by finding relationships between products such as movies, smartphones, and so on. But constructing and managing a large-scale knowledge graph are expensive because they typically need a large amount of time and human efforts. And one effective way to alleviate this problem is to automatically obtain fast information in the form of subject, predicate, and object triples to augment the knowledge graph. So in this work, we are especially interested in looking for this fast information from numerous relational web tables online because of two reasons. First, these relational web tables are often automatically populated from underlying database systems, which means they contain fast information of high quality. Second, these relational web tables often contain long-tailed fast information that are not covered by our existing knowledge graph. Here in the right figure, we have an example web page from a music website which embeds a relational web table. We can see this semi-structured web page has a page topic entity. In this case, it is the artist Elton John on top of the right figure. We have some key value pairs after the topic entity, and in the bottom of the figure, we have a relational web table which contains uh, various albums released by the artist. And if we click on one of the albums, it will direct us to a relational web table like shown in the left figure containing details tracking information in the album. We can see that um, for each relational web table, there is a subject column containing subject entities associated with the page topic entity, um, such as the title of the track in the left figure. And we also have multiple object columns containing object entities or attributes information of the subject uh, column. So each relational web table like this provides us a rich set of fast information between subject and object entities related to the page topic entity. To formally define the research problem, suppose we have a data set of relational web tables that has already been detected and extracted from web pages. Each table looks like a grid structure of cells, like shown in the left figure. We assume the first row contains the headers information, such as performer and the duration of the track, and we also assume the first column contains the subject entities information, uh, such as the titles of the track. We want to learn two mapping functions in this work, uh, so that we can output the fast information from each relational web table. The first function we want to learn is a column type mapping function that can map each table column into a predefined type in the knowledge graph. For example, given the column with the header performer in the right figure, we want to predict whether this column is of type uh, recording or of type person. The second function is a column relation mapping function that maps each pair of subject and object columns into a predefined relation in the knowledge graph. For example, given a pair of columns with headers title and time in the right figure, we want to predict whether the relation between these two columns is has performer or is the relation has duration. We want to mention here that a lot of existing work rely on uh, pre-linked cell entities information for these two tasks but that requires uh, expensive pre-processing steps, and in this work, we relax this constraint and do not assume there are any pre-linked cell entities information available. So for predicting the column type and the pairwise relation, we face three major challenges here. First, we have little context information because typically each table cell would only contain one or few words. And in addition, the table columns and most rows have the permutation invariant property, which means 
we cannot directly rely on the adjacent cells or adjacent columns for getting the uh, neighbor context information of the target cell or target column. Second, there are heterogeneous types of cell values such as text, digits, and URLs. And often, we can find blank spaces in the re relational web tables. So how to effectively extract and view the information from heterogeneous types of cell values is also an important question. And third, the column type and pairwise relation labels are, are often scarce because it is expensive to obtain human annotations for each table column. So we also want to overcome the shortage of labels problems in this work. There are some existing methods designed for the column type and the pairwise relation prediction tasks we explained in the previous slides. So earlier work relied on exact match and probabilistic models have high complexity and low recall values, which cannot be easily applied on large-scale datasets. Some visual engineering-based methods heavily rely on handcrafted features and cannot be generalized well into different domains. Recent representation learning methods linearize the table cells and use language models that are not specifically designed for the table structure, and the state-of-the-art methods are limited to consider only the context of intra-table cells. So this naturally leads to a question that can we use contextual information outside the target table for the column type and pairwise relation prediction tasks, and how can we actually use them? So to get a high-level intuition on the idea of utilizing intertable contextual information, here we have a concrete example of a soundtrack highlighted in the orange color in the left figure. By simply looking at the single table, we have some useful but limited information about the target cell. We can see the target cell Barbarians on the Frontier is included in the album named From the Vaults. We also know the index and the duration of the target song by looking at cells of the same row, and we can probably know other songs uh, in the same album by looking at cells of the same column. But this is not the only table contains relational information about the target cell. For example, in the top right figure, we know the country, the date, and the labels information of the same target song. And in the bottom right figure, we can know other songs of the same artist as our target song, as well as some additional um, identification information. So in this work, we propose a table representation learning method that can extract and fuse contextual information of the target cell in both the intra-table perspective and the inter-table perspective. The framework of our proposed approach, which we call the table convolutional network, is shown in this figure. The proposed model is mainly composed of two big components or five small modules. The intra-table aggregation component is used to summarize contextual information inside the target table, and it includes the row aggregation module highlighted in yellow and the column aggregation module highlighted in green. And the inter-table aggregation component is responsible for aggregating contextual information from other tables. It is composed of the value aggregation module in blue, the topic aggregation in cyan, and the position aggregation in purple. Next, I will present details on each aggregation module in the proposed table convolutional network one by one. For extracting contextual information of the target cell inside the table, we propose two attention-based aggregation modules for aggregating cells of the same column and the same row as the target cell. So in the left figure, we show the column aggregation module. Specifically, we use the target cell highlighted in red as the query to attend on other cells of the same column for obtaining the column aggregated embedding. In the right figure, we show the row aggregation module, and different from the column aggregation module, we use both the target cell and the page topic entity, uh, which is shown as the dashed column appended to the right side of the table, as the query to attend on, both, on other cells of the same row. The reason to include the page topic entity here is to account for different types of cell values across the same row, and in this way, we summarized all related cells information inside the table into the column aggregated embedding and the row aggregated embedding. The next step is to aggregate contextual information from other tables. Here we show the intertable aggregation on value cells which contains the same value as the target cell, but located in other tables of the dataset. For example, 
the three cells highlighted in blue in the figure contains the same value as our target cell highlighted in red. We wrap our previously introduced column and row aggregation modules into a single component, which we call it intra-table aggregation, and we apply it on each one of the tables containing value cells. So we can obtain the locally aggregated context embeddings of value cells like the green embeddings shown in the figure. Then we compute the value cells aggregated embedding by using the self-attention mechanism to get the uh, relative weights of each value cell and linearly combine their locally aggregated context embeddings. Besides value cells, we can also obtain intertable contextual information from two other types of cells, which we call them position cells and topic cells. In the left figure, we show the position cells highlighted in purple. They have the same position as the target cell in terms of the column and the row index, but they are located in different tables of the same schema or the same set of headers as the target table. And in the right figure, we show the topic cells contains the page topic entity of the target table. Like the intertable aggregation on value cells, we first apply the intertable aggregation on each one of these position and topic cells, then we obtain the position cells aggregated embedding and the topic cells aggregated embedding using self-attention. Although the calculations are similar for these three uh, intertable aggregation modules, the different nature of three types of intertable cells provides us valuable intertable contextual information from different aspects. For obtaining the final cell representation, we concatenate the original cell embedding with all intra- and intertable context embeddings we generated and apply a linear transformation. Because the column type and the pairwise relation predictions are both on the column level, we generate the column embedding as the mean of its cell embeddings. Then we use a single-layer feedforward network with softmax to output the predicted column type distribution. And similarly, we concatenate, concatenate the embeddings of column pair and use a single layer network to generate the predicted relation distribution. The final objective is a convex combination of these two prediction tasks with cross entropy loss. For validating the effectiveness of the proposed model, we conducted experiments on two real datasets of relational web tables. We collected the first dataset from six mainstream websites in the music domain and it contains more than 128,000 tables of 8 column types and 14 relations. For the second dataset, we used a public wiki tables dataset adopted by previous work. We took the subset which include complete type and relation annotations, and it contains around 55,000 tables, but with a much larger value of column types and relations compared with the first dataset. Here we present the overall performance of the proposed model against competitive baseline methods on the music dataset. We have three major observations here. First, we can see the tabular data representation learning method, TURL, is generally the best baseline method. It modified the powerful BERT model to the table structure, but is limited to consider intra-table cells. Second, we can see the task-specific model, SHARELOG, is good for predicting column type since it's highly effective uh, statistical features for handling numerical cell values. We can see our proposed model outperforms all strong baseline methods across different tasks and different metrics, which demonstrates the effectiveness of the idea on considering the intertable contextual information. In these two figures, we present the results on the wiki tables dataset. We generally have similar observations with a minor exception that the baseline model TURL performs better than SHARELOG in this case probably because numerical cell values are less useful in this dataset. We can see the proposed model consistently outperform other baselines by considering the intertable contextual information. So to sum up, in this work, we proposed the idea of modeling the intertable contextual information by considering three types of intertable cells. We proposed an approach for relational table representation learning, which include five different modules for aggregating intra- and intertable contexts. We also presented a supervised multitask objective for training the model, and you can find more details on our proposed unsupervised pre-training objective in our original paper. Thank you for listening to my presentation, and please let me know if you have any questions.